Hello, and welcome to today's wellness webinar. My name is Shane Dressy, and I am the wellness coordinator for the National Alliance on Mental Illness in San Diego. I have the privilege of working on a team of inspiring individuals who devote themselves to empowering our community with cutting-edge technology, apps, training classes, and wellness resources. Our project is funded by the County of San Diego Health and Human Services Agency through the Mental Health Services Act. Our goal is the creation and expansion of opportunities for uses of technology and strategies which support culturally competent recovery and resilience. The services are provided to existing consumers and family members of consumers of the Behavioral Health Services System. The project was aligned under the MHSA Capital Facilities and Technological Needs Plan and is called the Consumer and Family Empowerment Technology Project also known as NAMI San Diego Tech Cafe. I hope you're able to see everything on your screen currently. I do apologize for any technical difficulties we're having as we stream this webinar live. Um, you are here for part two of Cycling for Health, a wellness webinar exploring biking in San Diego and mental health wellness. Again, I'm Shane Drossi. I am the wellness coordinator here at NAMI San Diego. I've had the privilege of working on this team for the past seven months. You will notice up in the right-hand corner of your YouTube screen, there is an eye with a circle. If you click that eye, you will be given the option of engaging in a short poll. There is a link that brings you directly to the Tech Cafe site. In addition, the option of donating directly to NAMI San Diego. If you haven't done so already, we'd love for you to engage with us on social media. We are on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Twitter and Facebook are at NAMI San Diego, and Instagram is at NAMI.San.Diego. Alright, um, if you joined us for the first video, you'll know that uh, because of all those beautiful potholes, the GoPro that was attached to the handlebars on my bike recorded a video that is a bit shaky. Uh, because of this, if you're prone to dizziness, please feel free to look away during the video. Um, I have included some ocean sounds as well as my own voice and my own experience to entertain you as well. So. If the video is fuzzy and, and you're not enjoying watching it, just, just look away and listen. <laughs> I have included some useful biking links, um, which are on the screen currently. Um, I will put those in the, um, the information section as well on this basic, or the basic info section rather, on this YouTube video and the previous one. Um, some of those links will be to the SD Bike Coalition, Deco Bike, California Bicycle Safety, um, as well as Ride the City, Bike Out, and a few other um, awesome sites that I've found to kind of help guide us through biking in San Diego. Finally, here is a view of the map that I took um, to get from Ocean Beach up to Pacific Beach and back. Um, we go from Ocean Beach down through the San Diego River, over the Ocean Beach Bridge, um, down into Mission Beach through the bay. We cross over onto the beach side, up to Pacific Beach, and then this video um, picks up when we are crossing over into Mission Beach, going up to PB, and then circling back down to Ocean Beach. All right, and now just give me one moment, and I will go ahead and get the video started for everybody. Again, I do apologize if the video stream is fuzzy. Um, if anybody would like um, a copy of this video, um, feel free to reach out um, and we'd be happy to try to provide you with a copy of it. Um, however, um, you will get the general gist of it, so bear with us. Um, so let's start. Here we are in Mission Beach. We are about to cross over the main road and go over to the beach side of everything. 
Um, I'm going to first talk about, say you don't have a bike, but you really want to go on a bike ride. There's this really cool service in San Diego called Deco Bike. It's decobike.com. They have locations literally all across San Diego. Um, their their motto is join, select, enjoy, and return. Um, so basically what you do is when you find one of these bike stations, there's three in Ocean Beach close to where the bike trail is that I'm taking. There's actually, let me count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are 10 Deco bike stations on this bike route that I'm currently taking. Um, so they're definitely, they know, they know where their market is, um, they know where to be, um, and they've made themselves pretty open and available um, to us throughout San Diego. Basically when you find one, um, you enter your credit card information, type in the bicycle, it'll unlock the bicycle, and then you have it rented for that period of time. Um, and the cool thing is you can ride, say, from Ocean Beach up to Pacific Beach, find another Deco bike station, and then put that bike back in. Um, that's how you return it. It's like returning a library book. And from there, you can go about your day, rent another bike, and return home at your convenience. But you don't have to spend, you know, eight hours of, of time if you're planning on um, docking the bike at, at a certain point throughout the ride. So we're going to cover some Southern California cycling news and laws. Um, this is from CaliforniaBicycleSafety.com. So it's important to know that cyclists are treated like vehicle operators under most California bicycle laws. This means you're required to obey lane designations, stop signs, traffic lights, and DUI laws. That's right. You heard it. You cannot just go out to the bars and drink as much as you want to and then get on your bike and ride home. Um, you are considered to be maintaining a vehicle when you're on your bike, so it is important to abide by all laws that you would when you are getting into your own vehicle. Besides using a well-maintained bike in good repair, understanding San Diego, California bicycle law and utilizing bike safety practices, you should also exercise good old-fashioned common sense. This will help minimize the chance of your involvement in a San Diego bike accident. Um, it's important to know that, um, as, as, as important as all of this information is, a lot of it is common sense. Um, so just, just do the right thing. Do what you would want to be done around you. Um, don't make sudden moves or sudden gestures like we covered in the previous video. Um, make everything pretty apparent and opaque. Um, and, and use your best judgment. Um, biking should be fun, and it should be centered around having fun. Um, so it's important to not get too caught up in um, the legality of all of it, but it is also important to make sure that we're empowering ourselves with all the right information so that we can go out and continue to have fun time and time again. All right. <clears throat> According to California Bicycle Helmet Law, bicyclists under the age of 18 are required to wear a helmet. The Bicycle Helmet Law in California is one of the most important bicycle laws we have on books. This is because a minor spill while riding could lead to irreparable and life-threatening bicycle-related brain injury. This is not only for child bicycle accidents. It makes good sense for all cyclists, no matter their ages, to protect themselves by wearing the proper cycling gear, which includes a properly fitted bicycle helmet. I mentioned in the previous video, one of my good friends was in an accident um, with a vehicle and claims that without his helmet, he probably wouldn't have made it. It is really important, no matter how good of a biker you are, no matter how athletic you are, no matter how often you do it, that you um, you take the safety precautions to protect yourself, and probably the best precaution is to just wear a helmet. Makes sense. In many situations, bike lane rules suggest that the safest place for a cyclist is to ride in the bicycle lane when one is available. If a bike lane is not present, ride as far as to the right as is possible. Constantly surveying your surroundings and anticipating your next move will make a difference when you must exercise exceptions to the general rules. Exceptions may include avoiding road hazards or moving into the center of the lane. All bicyclists are required to use hand signals before stopping, turning, or changing lanes.
signaling your intentions to motorists. It is courteous and actively elicits their cooperation in your bike safety. Allow yourself plenty of time to signal before changing lanes or making a turn. Try to establish eye contact with motorists as you deliver clear hand signals. Scan, signal, and negotiate with motorists before you move into traffic. It's incredibly, incredibly important. We're only a couple hundred pounds, but the cars are a couple thousand pounds. We need to make sure that they know what we're planning on doing before we do it. Um, it's just a good rule of thumb. Equip your bike with lights and reflectors for night riding. Your bike must have a white headlamp that has the capacity to project light in front inside of a roadway for a minimum distance of 300 feet. Also equip the rear of the bike with a red reflector that is visible for a distance of 500 feet. A cyclist needs a white or yellow reflector on the bike's pedals or the cyclist's ankles or shoes, which is visible from 200 feet. California bicycle law also requires a white or yellow reflector on each side forward of the bicycle center and a white or red reflector on each side behind the bike center. Um, on this website, CaliforniaBicycleSafety.com, there is a diagram of exactly where those reflectors should be and what the um, minimum requirements are for headlamps and reflectors. As we mentioned before, um, you, you honestly can get a DUI when you're riding your bike. So um, let's go over some San Diego bicycle tips. These are from the Southern California Cycling Safety um, website. It's CaliforniaBicycleSafety.com. Um, and they're talking about the dangers of biking under the influence of alcohol. So after an evening of drinking, it might seem like a better idea to reach for your bike helmet instead of your car keys. However, biking under the influence of alcohol is still dangerous and could result in a serious cycling accident. You could even be charged with a crime under California bicycle laws. Even if you are a recreational cyclist, you should treat your bike like your car when alcohol is involved. The reason that it is illegal in California to drive a bike or ride a bicycle, or drive a car or ride a bicycle rather, after drinking, is that alcohol impairs your ability to do either of the th these things safely. Biking under the influence significantly increases your chances of having a cycling accident, possibly resulting in serious injuries or death. In fact, nearly a quarter of all fatal bicycle accidents involve a drunk cyclist. Some of the effects of alcoholism of alcohol rather that can lead to a cycling accident include impaired vision, slower reaction times, drowsiness, inability to concentrate, overconfidence, or reduce fine motor skills and balance. So it's important that we are mindful of this situation and that we don't get on our bike um, when we wouldn't be getting in our car, um, and that is after we've been drinking. So make sure you are not um, perpetuating an issue here in San Diego by um, riding your bike under the influence of alcohol. Um, do everything safely, and if you do it safely, you're going to have more opportunities to do it again in the future, as well as you're going to keep the people around you safe. All right, let's get over to our video. You'll notice a lot of people here in Pacific Beach and Mission Beach use this as um, an exercise route, which is really fun. It's really fun to get out there and exercise with other people, um, even strangers. Um, it's, it's honestly, it's, it's a lot more fun than doing it in your home. Um, so get out there. Um, one of the cool things is you can be sitting at your home kind of bored, not knowing what's going on, not knowing if anybody's out there. It might not even be the most beautiful day, but if you get on your bike, if you put on your running shoes and you get out there, you'll see all these other people that are doing the same thing as you, that are motivated to do the same things as you, which is exciting. There's, uh, there's excitement and camaraderie. So get out there and be a part of the scene. I have included a link to the San Diego Union Tribune. Um, it is a article outlining um, the local bike paths that we have available here in San Diego. So I'm going to go over a few of those with you. So they start with, if you're a true beginner, go to Sail Bay. 
Where is it? Seal Bay is accessible via the Mission Boulevard or Ingraham Street bridges. What's it like? The area has wide sidewalks, lovely views, and cool breezes. There's less of a crowd than on the oceanfront boardwalk, which is where we currently are, <laughs> um, which means fewer accidents um, or accidental bump-ins. Um, Sail Bay is U-shaped with many entry points, so you can start from anywhere and ride as long or as little as you like. There's drinking fountains and restrooms near Faneuil Square. Faneuil Street Park, I'm sorry, Faneuil Square is in Boston. I'm showing where I'm from originally. You can also grab some lunch at some of the nearby hotels like Catamaran Resort and Spa. If you're looking for cheap bites, um, head to Mission Boulevard where options seem endless. Watch out for sunbathers, slow walking toddlers, and dogs. <laughs> Next, we have something a little bit more experienced, um, and it's at Fiesta Island. Um, it's an approximate five mile loop, um, they call it easy, um, but it's a place where you can go and train for kind of a longer distance bike route, um, so it's, it's a good option for those that are trying to pick up their endurance and maybe go on longer cycling trips. Coast 101. Now this is something that I am kind of working myself up to, this is something that I have in my future. Um, I would eventually love to be able to bike from San Diego up to Orange County and back. Uh, and one way of doing that is to take Coast Highway 101. It's located off of Interstate 5. You can access it via, via Solana Beach, Cardiff, Encinitas, Lucadia, or Carlsbad. Now it says, though the Coast Highway corridor is bustling with car traffic, there are des designated bike lanes and paths depending on where you ride. The train is in combination of street and bike paths, but the coastal locations make for a breezy ride. There are some state beaches where you can pay to park for the afternoon, um, and there are metered spots along Coast Highway and some free neighborhood spots off various side streets. Um, and there are definitely pit stops on this way as well, and they consider this level intermediate. Now a local favorite would be Silver Strand Bikeway. It's uh, set the San Diego Coronado Bridge near Hotel del Coronado. Depending on where you enter, it can be anywhere from 7 to 11 miles each way. Most riders begin at Glorieta Boulevard or in Panoma Avenue in Coronado and finish in Imperial Beach. Along the flat route, you'll see the ocean, yachts, parks, and wildlife from the nearby refuge. There are spots at either end. Coronado tends to get busy, so you may have to drive around to find free spots. Um, Watch out for cars, cyclists, and bird droppings. <laughs> Something I've thankfully been able to avoid up until this point. All right, San Diego River. So this is where we are. Um, I kind of, I guess I did like a combination of a few of these routes for this video, but um, this it says, it, where is it? It technically begins in Ocean Beach and with some road traffic goes out to Mission Valley. Um, so I, I use part of this trail. Um, it's mostly fat, uh, flat rather, and can be anywhere from 5 to 20 miles depending on how far you want to go. There are some heavy traffic areas around Pacific Highway and you'll be riding under bridges so be aware of your surroundings. So there's a surprising amount of wildlife to see. Um, this is honestly where I see the most cranes um, and other waterfowl in San Diego. And it's typically not a very well ridden um, trail so you'll you'll be out there and kind of realize that you, you kind of feel like you got the whole trail to yourself it's really nice all right now for the biking or the mountain bikers rather we can go up to Sorrento Valley it's um, from the east you can start at Black Mountain Road from the west you'll find an easy entrance by north of the border bike shop on Sorrento Valley Boulevard what it's like we're not talking about the paved path off Highway 56. This is all canyons. You'll be on a fire road or a double track, which means the trail is wide. The train can be rugged, but you'll find surprising spots along the way, like a waterfall and plenty of nature. That sounds amazing. I don't have a mountain bike, so I won't be doing that. Um, I would also say if you're going to put a GoPro on your bike, put it on your helmet on this one. Don't put it on your handlebars because your video will end up being really bumpy. Hit the city. So we've got an Adams Avenue bike path. It begins at Park Boulevard or in Kensington. 
Um, there's a bike lane to a road that has lots of stoplights, road signs, and buses. You'll see congestion in normal heights and again by 30th, but the roads are wide and drivers here tend to be bike friendly. There's lots of parking. Um, and along with coffee shops, there are other bike shops and bike friendly establishments like Blind Lady Ale House. Which again, if we're drinking, let's not get back on our bike afterwards. So those are just a few of the options that you have. San Diego has an abundance, an abundance of bike trails. Um, I'm still finding them as I journey through. Um, I find it really exciting that we have so many things at our disposal, so many great trails, um, etc. Um, so over the weekend, we had. Um, the Ocean Beach Street Fair, and if you attended, you will notice that there was like a bike valet. Um, by the way, we just passed one of the deco bike stands on our right. I don't know if you noticed that in the video. Um, anyway, um, so this is a group of people. They they call themselves the San Diego Bike Coalition or SDBikeCoalition.org is their website, um, and it is a nonprofit group that tries to make San Diego more bikeable. So um, one of the things they do is with large events, they'll create a bike valet, which is kind of a gated area that they create on the street um, where you can go and park your bikes that you ride. They'll be kept safe, guarded by um, the San Diego Bike Coalition until you return to retrieve them and head back home. So definitely when you're at an event and you see this option, take advantage of it. Um, typically they'll They'll advertise beforehand that they're having some sort of bike corral. So um, if you see that, then definitely bike to that event instead of ride your car. It's um, a cool way of meeting like-minded people. Um, it's environmentally friendly and it's good exercise. All right, I'm on the San Diego Bike Coalition website right now. <clears throat> I'm gonna take a look at their events page so they have different bike rides that you can sign up for and join there's a 12 mile bike ride on the 4th of july um, the 12 mile bike ride is designed as a family friendly fun ride it is an easy ride touring around scenic lake miramar two times then down the hill to hoyt park where the festivities await um, in addition, there's a 28-mile bike ride that is designed for both the dedicated and weekend riders. It takes you on a beautiful and clearly marked course through Rancho Peñasquitos, Santa Luz, Del Sur, Rancho Bernardo, and Poway. So that would be in North County. Finally, there's a 50-mile bike path or a bike ride. It is um, on the 4th of July as well. It's for serious riders who are in top condition and have been training for some time. It's gorgeous but grueling is how they describe it ride around beautiful San Diego. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm ready for anything like that, but it's definitely something to work yourself up to. Um, but the cool thing is there's a bunch of 4th of July events um, that are surrounding bicycles, so get out there and have fun. All right, let's check out their resources on getting around by bike. So maybe you're wondering, um, I'd really like to bring my bike to X, but I ride the bus, what can I do? So here are the MTS, or the Metropolitan Transit System, um, guidelines for bicycles. Bikes ride for free with any paying transit rider. Please remember you're responsible for the loading and unloading of your bicycle. Remove all loose items not attached to your bike. Direct to security, lock your wheel to the frame of your bike before the bus arrives. Do not like your, lock your bicycle to the bus rack. Each MTS bus can accommodate two bicycles in the rack on the front of the bus. Wait for the next bus if the bike rack is full. So the first thing we were talking about were trolleys. Um, you can bring your bike on, your tro on the trolley. There's absolutely no problem with that. If you're getting on a bus, there is a bike rack on the front of the bus um, that you will be allowed to use. Um, what I was just reading was if there are two bikes on that bus, then unfortunately you will have to wait for the next bus. Um, we 
had some major technical difficulties right there, my friends. I do apologize. I hope that our stream is still working. Let's see if we pick back up. I think we just picked back up. I don't know what we missed. I do apologize if we did miss anything just now. Um, what I was just going over was um, um, bike regulations for riding the MTS system, so the San Diego Metropolitan Transit System. Um, if you did miss it, um, I, I apologize if I'm repeating myself and you already heard this, but um, just remember two bikes per bus. If there's two bikes on that bus currently, um, that means you have to wait for the next bus. If you're getting on a trolley and it's peak trolley time um, back, Okay, so we're leaving Marina Village right now in our video. We are about to go back over the bridge um, into Ocean Beach, down into Dog Beach, which is where our video will um, will leave us for the day. Um, thank you for joining me on this bike ride. Um, it was really fun to film. Um, it's been really fun to make these webinars surrounding it, um, and I hope you enjoyed it and it's gotten you kind of excited to get out and explore some of the outdoor activities that San Diego has to offer. Um, I, I moved here from a place that had um, pretty much <laughs> no bike trails. Um, you, you could ride your bike anywhere, but you'd have to be on the road. And it's, I think it's important to remember how, how lucky in, um, we are to be in such a great place like San Diego and to be able to take advantage of all of the options that we have to be outdoorsy and stay healthy and um, at the same time enjoy this beautiful city that we have at our disposal. So please, I hope this, if, if this video did anything, I hope it had motivated you to get outside and, and get excited about what we have around us. Um, and again, I, I do apologize if we're still experiencing any issues with this stream. Um, it looks like the internet is moving at dinosaur speeds. All right, so uh, towards the end of this video, I um, will be sharing the links to the videos again, and then we'll have those in the basic info section of this webinar. Um, All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining me today on this bike ride. Um, get out there, have fun. And from all of us at NAMI San Diego Tech Cafe, we hope you have a beautiful week.